that, that might, you know, not let cancer win on me, not even take a body part. And that's part of my motivation. So um, now we're going to go through the treatment side of it. And this first one, uh, drop, I'm going to read you what I wrote in here. And the books are for sale, by the way, out there. We're giving you a, a art show price of savings. Um, here she is also, oh, this is from a series called Naked. Here she is also naked, but is now surrounded by others in one of those gatherings common to the Oregon beaches that Ross Paul frequents with her family. This was actually on a surf trip to Solulita, Mexico that I got the reference photograph. So it's not Manzanita Beach, but it, we were surfing down there. Um, in this painting, young people gather in the foreground, taking a break from their activities in the surf. They pay little attention to the naked woman in their midst, and she pays little attention to them. Some experience has separated her from the lives of those around her. She may be exposed, but they do not see her. She makes eye contact with the viewer, but her steady gaze does not create a bond, instead establishes her distance. She is very much alone. And that was by the curator Terry Hopkins for, um, uh, she was a curator from the Merrill Hurst Art Gym, and, and this was for a show a catalog, which is for sale up here, um, called Naked. Well, anyway, this is very much how I was feeling uh, soon after I had this done. Um, anybody I even told about it, it just didn't compute. They'd say, like I told you, well, if that's so good, if it's introgress and gives you immunity, why haven't I heard about it? Why didn't my doctor tell me about it? I mean, you know, nobody really wanted to go there because they hadn't seen it written about, they hadn't seen it on TV, they hadn't, their doctor hadn't, you know, so it's almost as if what I was telling them didn't exist. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that was kind of hard. And then I made the really stupid mistake, don't do this if you're a patient pioneer, but I made the stupid mistake because my husband had shown me how to research medical papers to go online and look at the PowerPoint presentation that my doctor, Peter Lickrup, was going around the world showing people, trying to promote this. And so then I saw my breast, and I saw it, you know, in all the stages it had just gone through. And after I saw it, it, it just, like, became real in this abstract thing, and I went and threw up, and it was awful. And, and so don't do that, is what I'm telling you. But anyway, so, and this is actually a local model. We won't give you her name, but she's in quite a few of these paintings, and I love her to death. If you know who she is, you probably will recognize her. Um, and then I started, after the, you know, the, um, the cryo, uh, I, I went through radiation, which, the, you know, insurance company didn't know what to do. I think it's still part of the protocol is that you get radiated. Well, for me, really, I don't have the, the best liver, and I was not processing things so well. And my brain sh shut down, and I, <laughs> for the first time in my life, I couldn't just look at something and replicate it. A, a skill I was born with, and it was always so easy for me to just look at something, draw it, and it looked like it looked. And, you know, it was just an easy thing. And I, and I kind of thought, oh, my God. Is this how other people that are frustrated they can't draw feel? I mean, it was really awful. And um, but I I could do these weird doodles and the and a lot of weird weird drawings that were symbolic. I'm not a, this is like the best of them. They were kind of dark. They were weird. They had symbolism. I could kind of bundle them up. There was a curator that came down from the Tacoma area that I think he was coming to offer me a one-person show and wanted to see what I was up to, and I showed him these, and he just, you know, I never heard from him again. <laughs> was kind of, uh, you know, how scary they were. Well, bless her heart, um, and Portland artist, if you're from Portland and know the art scene there, you might know the artist, Malia Jensen. She, she was curating a drawing show called Core Sample, but it's kind of a citywide show, and she really wanted me to be in her drawing exhibit. And I showed her these, because that's what I was doing. And she said, you know, well, these are, are great, they're interesting, they're fine, I'm glad you processed. But um, I kind of think of you as, uh, you know, human faces, you get, you, you capture an emotion in the look of the person. And, and that's what I love about your work, and I would like you to do me some of those drugs. 
well, easier said than done if you, you know, what I found out later is, you know, you have the three brains and on your, your alligator brain level, the base level, you tend to see pattern. And so I was seeing pattern everywhere. I mean, in some ways, that's why um, a lot of uh, primitive art has, uh, you know, patterns in it. I mean, if you can close the other two bra brains down, uh, Native Americans have a saying that you walk the way. You start seeing the pattern in nature and you use it. And that's how some of the beautiful blankets and things get get made, so that you, you can close the, you know, your brain that's always busy, you quiet that down and, and when you get to the base you see some of that pattern. Well I was you know, mine was was radiation caused and so I just saw these spheres with all these things in them and I use them. I, I don't know, I just sit around and doodle them all the time. But finally, through a lot of trial and error, I just, well, here I'll show you. I got a, I, you know, didn't really want to hire a model because I was doing such terrible work. So I started doing a lot of self-portraits and of course you want yourself to look good. So I, you know, I uh, worked so hard and I'm a teacher. I show other people how to do it. I had to take all my own lessons. I had to learn how to do the value patterns and how eyes work. And I went through my own teaching notes and I, I just went through all those steps. I mean, my husband has kind of a bum knee from infection right now and he's getting back up on a surfboard and he's kind of going through all the steps, right? I mean, you know, you have to retrain sometimes. So here's finally a portrait that worked and I just by the skin of my teeth was able to get enough drawings done, but it was hard work, I'll tell you. And so now I am very sympathetic that anybody that says, I can't draw, well I know what that feels like and it's not fun. Um, okay, uh, so this one I wanted to read to you too, it's the last of the ones I'm going to be reading. Uh, this is called Filter. And uh, this again is by Terry Hopkins, and I think it's in that catalog out there. I think this is the one on the cover. The psyche, the soul, the essence of the individual, and how that individual fights and negotiates or embrace it, embraces the precariousness of existence has long been the subject of painter Ross Paul's art. The protagonists in these new paintings are contemplative rather than active, intensely quiet rather than intensely emotional. They are, it appears, in a state of suspended animation. They are thinking. They are also naked. Okay, well, um, you can see she's walking through these little patches of light, and I use reference to a, a forest walk that I take my dogs uh, through every day. And I love the dappled light, and that's kind of what I was going through. I mean, I, I have a little moment of light, and I say, yeah, I, I had my intention, and I was still on my breasts, but um, but then I have to face some radiologists that treated me like I was a criminal and, you know, all that. So um, only a few patches of light. Okay, so... This one, again, uh, local model, and any of you that fish outside of Astoria might, what buoy is it? Buoy? Well, that was the old weather buoy. Okay, the old weather buoy. And my husband, who, you know, owned a boat for a long number of years and is an avid fisherman, um, he, he really uh, told me that there are certain buoys that beyond which is kind of no man's land and you just can't be certain about what the oceans is going to do and it's dangerous. But when you're coming back, you get inside certain movies and it's safe ground. And so I just like that metaphor and I like that we can't see what she's standing on. We don't know where she's at. She's out in this big expanse of ocean. There's a marker. It could, she could be on the safe side or the non-safe side. You know, that was a great metaphor for me. Um, and then the final one I'm going to show you uh, are these. I, I did a watercolor series within the Naked Show, and I just went through the chakras uh, color-wise. And if you don't know about chakras, and probably most people do, but they're the energy centers that run up your meridian, and they're in the kind of color of the rainbow. And each of them kind of has a different energy associated with it. So this is the red, and it's the base chakra. Um, down sacrally, 
and I depicted two women, one naked and one clothed, and there's the, the two fluids here, the milk and the blood, that are kind of <coughs> unique fluids that women make, and they're both associated with their nurturing, so they, they can have babies, you know, the menstrual cycle, so you'll be able to carry a baby and have enough uh, blood to feed it, and then the milk cycle, so that's the red. And then uh, orange, and I'm telling you my interpretation. I don't want everybody coming to me and say, that's not really the red, so that you have your own red. I, that was my red, I'm using it just as a way to talk about this. I know, you know, so just listen to my <laughs> I, I know I'm, you know, out there. I mean, the, the orange is one-on-one, -on -one. usually your first one-on-one -on -one is your mom, and then, you know, it goes to your lover and all that. It's your sex chakra. But here, I wanted it with, uh, the, the woman with the twin version of herself, and this one has a tiger in her, and just, hey, let's go for this, let's, let's tell the other women about it. And this one's kind of, she's got the stripes, but she's sitting on the job and not knowing if she wants um, the, the job. So anyway, it reminded me of, of the biblical story of Jonah that, you know, God tells Jonah to go to Nineveh and tell him, put your wanton ways and, you know, uh, start following me. And be good and anyway Jonah doesn't like didn't want to do it so he goes and gets swallowed in the well and then finally the well spits him out and so then he decides to take it up well this is the Jonah part where I'm not sure I really want to go talking to people about you know things like nakedness and breast cancer and all that so I, I'm not there yet but this the the stomach chakra has a lot to do like with your self-esteem and all that and I remember, you know, just uh, praying so badly, let's make this happen, let's see if we can get it to work, to work. But, you know, you don't want to just be there in a vacuum, you want to share it with your, your loved ones and sisters and all that. So here, here's, you know, she's offering to a random woman, you can see the balls and their alignment. You probably are picking up on some of my symbology now. Um, and this is the green, the heart chakra. Now, a lot of times, there's certain chakras that kind of line up, and, and the purple at the top can inform something like your heart. Well, you know, obviously my heart's going out. I can't just be in a vacuum on this. Uh, the medical world and poor Dr. Ledrup was having a really hard time, and I'll, I'll just tell you that, uh, you know, you have to have a medical code in order to get insurance to pay for a treatment. Well, you can't get the code unless you do a trial. And maybe you guys all know this, I didn't know it, but um, trials cost a buttload of money and because this is a fairly inexpensive procedure, I mean, now they do it, uh, there's just local numbing, you don't even have to be put out like I was. And it, quick recovery and it, it's way a lot less expensive and all that. So there's, what's incentive, you know? And so he was just having a hard time getting it going. Um, here, the, the, Blue, which is the throat chakra. Well, she's got a crowd. This is men's in the future. I already recognize this, but uh, and I'm very, I'm very lucky in that I have a beautiful daughter, always willing to take her clothes off and pose naked. Where I got a beautiful, uh, about to be daughter-in-law that does the same thing. So lucky me, since I'm a pretty artist. Anyway, here she is. She doesn't want to stand up and expose herself to this crowd on the beach, but. These two clothed gal, they're they're real busy paying attention to whatever they're paying attention to, and they're just kind of ignoring her. But they are her contemporaries. Um, okay, and then the indigo chakra, your third third eye, and all these moons around that they could pay attention to, and all these balls on the ground. Now she looks a little nervous and scared, but she looks she's starting to get determined, and at least she's sitting up. So, and then this fi final one, uh, the violet, you know, the one above your head. Well, I thought, why not use Buddha because, you know, that would be a good violet one. And then she, she's lying and trying to emulate Buddha and just sort of with her eyes closed and getting into this quiet, peaceful place. But her eyes are open and she's kind of still not sure. So that's the chakras. And then, um, 
this is an oil painting around the, the same time and it, again it was my poor daughter I made her stand in the uh, you know the ocean in winter when it was quite cold <laughs> but um, this is this is a sound mandala and it was just like somebody gong in a bell and you know you have to do this you know you have to go to Nineveh or whatever you know and I, I kind of took up the gauntlet and during this time Alex is writing the book and you know, I'm beginning to think, well, yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to do what I can here. 